Get a recording now, you know. Get 
well now with, with all these Navy types here, <laughs> I should uh, explain a little something about this office. That carved desk there uh, has a little Navy background also. That, uh, there was an English ship many years ago that was lost trying to get in on a rescue mission into the Arctic, lost in the ice. Some years later, an American whaler came upon it, brought it out, we refurbished it and returned it. It was a naval vessel to Queen Victoria. And when that ship was decommissioned, one day a 1,300 pound package arrived at the White House. I think it was in the time of President Hayes. And they had out of the plants of that ship, they had made that carved desk. And uh, people weren't as big in those days as we are today because I finally had to have them add a layer around the bottom there <laughs> because I couldn't get the knees <laughs> But in those days, you could accept gifts. But <laughs> Just my knees as well. Oh boy, yes. How are you doing? Hello. Good to see you. Good to see you. That's right. Hello, Miss Ring. Nice to see you. Now, the reason, the reason Jesse does not have a necktie is that we couldn't dress him properly when we got him out of jail. We, we had to patch him up. So somebody had to give him a curly shirt. Somebody gave him a necktie. Somebody gave him a... I'll get you that. See? So he, he just stripped it. That's, that's, that's the testimony to Robert there. Let me also say, I have a son who comes to the White House here often, and uh, getting a necktie on him is quite a problem. It's <laughs> <laughs> because he hasn't got it. Style, and it goes with the age. Well. This, you were right on track with what is our desire and our hope, yes. Now, I understand the press is waiting out there, and uh, we're going out and um, say a few words, and I, I believe that, uh, now I make sure I have this right, I believe that uh, you will be on my right, and you will be on my left out there at the podium, and the others will gather around and uh, <laughs> frame the picture. We'll fill in the background. Jesse and Jesse. about some of the doings of the Army. And he finally was talking to him, asking an old sergeant about it, a regular Army sergeant. And the sergeant said, well, let me explain it to you this way. He said, if you were a new country creating an Army, beginning of an Army, and you finally got a division put together, what would you call it? And the kid said, well, I guess I'd call it the first division. He said, in the United States, they called it the second division. And he said, when you understand that, you'll understand everything. <laughs> <laughs> well, here we go. She 
with and after, he exemplified qualities of leadership and loyalty, qualities of so many fine men and women in our military that we're all proud of. Reverend Jackson's mission was a personal mission of mercy, and he has earned our gratitude and our admiration. Lieutenant Goodman's release affords us a unique opportunity to, well, I took advantage of the opportunity to write to President of Syria and call for Syrian cooperation in securing peace in Lebanon. Last night, Don Rumsfeld left to seek diplomatic solutions to the problems of the region. And today, on this happy occasion, foreign forces from Lebanon. As I say, this is a homecoming. Thank you all for recording us for posterity. I would just like to uh, once again thank uh, all the people involved, uh, Reverend Jackson, uh, Ambassador Paganelli. Thank you very much, and I appreciate all the support. Let me express thanks to the Ecumenical Body of Ministers led by Dr. Howard, who took this risky mission of mercy. The people around this nation who wore their blue ribbons as a measure of solidarity as we prayed together and fasted together, trying to rise above the everydayness of our lives that we might be able to secure the release of Lieutenant Robert Goodman and to gain his freedom and have a breakthrough for peace. We want to thank Almighty God who heard our sincere and earnest meaningful to us that once we got our telegram back from President Assad, we then called Senator then got us in contact with the State Department, uh, Ambassador Murphy and Mr. Lawrence Eagleberger. It was the support of our State Department within the law that gave us the latitude that we needed to feel that we were doing the right thing within the law. It made the choice not to prevail and to feel was significant to us. The fact that Ambassador Paganelli met us in, in Syria was a signal that our government had uh, reasonable doubt because missions like this are not that uh, successful often, but that was all that we needed was the reasonable assurance and the support. I would hope that the cycle of pain is now broken and that this mission of peace will take us to an everlasting peace. Lastly, it is significant that we were in uh, Damascus, was the Apostle Paul, and because we saw that new light, the world has never been the same since. As it were, December of this past year, President Assad used this opportunity to seize an initiative. And we want to express our thanks to him. The hearts agree that we do have the capacity to save this generation from disaster. Thank you. President, sir, would you Of course. Are there any such plans? Are there any such plans, sir? Well, we have opened the Reverend just said, and the said in my remarks, we have open communication with him. We will What about the Lebanese plan for reconciliation, Mr. President? That's going forward. Do we think that it's a breakthrough now? Mr. Miles? We think, we think we've made progress.
how they have grown. I thought uh, in this opening chart, makes it a little bit more dramatic how over a 30 year period uh, our budget receipts uh, really have increased. And if you look at the uh, 1980 amount, $517 billion. Uh, with no new taxes, no additional taxes, nothing except current services. Uh, by 1989, that will grow to a trillion to 60 billion. In other words, just about double from 80 to 89, uh, our total uh, receipts in government. Now, how, how much of that, just roughly ballpark figure, would be the continuing increase in <coughs> Social Security? If you turn to the next chart, it pretty well dramatizes that. This is the chart that Marty referred to yesterday asking about it. Well, what was the total portion of uh, GNP that came from uh, total receipts and then Social Security and all of the name it, the yellow being Social Security. Now, to be specific, okay. Okay. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. say that, that figure, the 1300 percent figure from the last meeting, no, that was in the figures we used the other day. That wasn't books. I, I just looked them up again on my desk. It was wrong. Uh -huh. It's in those figures in the charts that we used the other yeah. day. Yeah. Education for children. So, 